Agua Special Utility District, January 16, 2023. It's a regular meeting of the Board of Directors. Time, 6.01 p.m. Call to order, uh, Dr. Flores Villarreal. Here. Jose Luis Ochoa Jr. Here. Ricardo Perez. Absent. Homero Tijerina. Here. Ana Maria Perez. Here. Narciso Solis. Here. Okay, we do have a quorum. Item number one, call, um, 1B, invocation is going to be given by Cindy Villarreal. Uh, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, item 1D, public comments. Uh, Madam President, we do not have any public comments at this time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, item two, uh, minutes. A, approval of minutes for October 3rd, 2022, Agua Board Meeting. So move. Second. Okay, I have a motion by who is Mr. Mr. Tijerina and a second by Mr. Solis. All in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. B, approval of minutes for October 10th, Agua Special Utility, well, uh, Utility Board um, meeting. So move. So move. I have a, a motion by Mr. Tijerina and a second by? Second. Mr. Solis. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. C, approval of minutes for the November 16, 2022, Agua Special Board meeting. Uh, Madam President, before uh, we proceed, uh, there's a, a change, a, a mistake on a name on page two, uh, paragraph number four. Instead of being Mr. Ricardo Ochoa, it should be uh, Mr. Ricardo Perez, just to note that uh, that change. Yeah, I, I, I caught that. Okay. Yes. Uh, do we have a motion? So move. Mr. Tijerina and Mr. Ochoa for second. second. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. D, approval of minutes for November 21st, 2020, 2022, Agua Special Board meeting. So moved. Mr. Tijerina and I have a second. Second. Mr. Solis. Item number three, discussion and possible action on an order by the Agua Sud Board of Directors amending Article 7, Section 7 through 15, Leak Repair Assistance. We need to vote on it. Yeah, okay. we didn't vote on uh, 2D. You got the motion, the second, but I don't think we voted. Oh, okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> Sorry about that. <clears throat> Item number three, discussion and possible action on order by the Alwasa Board of Directors amending Article 7, Sections 7 through 15, Leak Repair Assistance of the Alwasa Rules Authorizing General Manager and Executive Committee to grant relief. So move. Okay, I have a motion by Ms. Perez. Second? Second. But, yeah, there's a couple of questions I have after we open okay, it up I'm for sorry. discussion. Do we have uh, any Second. questions? Um, I, I just wanted to ask what were the changes or like the... Oh, yes, uh, and Madam President of the Board, uh, I'm happy to, to answer that. If you look at the, this is a order amending Rule 7-15 regarding deep repair assistance. The order only add in their entirety uh, Section C, D, and E. Those sections uh, are not in rules, this, those are the three sections that are proposed to be added. Um, and my understanding is that the, the board, a previous board had authorized the general manager 
not make its way into the rules as they currently exist, and so this is to correct that and then add some more details onto that. The proposed change would authorize the general manager to grant relief on requests that are up to $250. And so this section uh, regards a leak that is on the customer side, on their side of the meter, and this uh, section or this rule allows them to grant relief. Uh, it allows the general manager to grant relief if the request is below two hundred is two hundred and fifty dollars or below, uh, and it also authorizes the executive committee to grant relief if the request is above that amount. It also adds a limit onto the number of times that relief can be requested, so that a customer that knows of a leak and does not address that leak cannot, you know, repeatedly come back to the board and. Relief, even though they're aware of it. And so uh, it limits it to one month's billing cycle per customer per calendar year. Um, it also clarifies that relief granted under this section can also take the form of the district's deferred payment plan uh, that's uh, set out in a different rule. On number five, should it read um, the customer has paid his or her minimum monthly charge, her or she, should it read he or she? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Robert, right now you're handling uh, leak adjustments over $250. Yes. Right. Yes, all the leak adjustments. We uh, made adjustments as far as only authorizing uh, one month this prior year, instead of, you know, some customers will, will be here for three months, four months, depending on the leak. And, uh, you know, we cut that to, to, to one month. I, I've been practicing that, right? So that we can and what's maybe the highest uh, leak adjustment It's that been in, done the, in, the thousand, in the thousands. Thousands. I mean, yes. I, I, so do we get a reporting of that? Like how many are given to you all a month? Yes, we can, we can have a report, but it's, uh, I'm, I'm going to say probably... 30 a month or more or less? 30 a month. Yeah, monthly. By weekly, I get you know, 10, sometimes more. Sometimes. Now, they don't know of a leak sometimes until they get their bill, well, correct? That, that is correct. So my only, I guess, concern is they're not taking care of the leak right away because maybe they don't know they have a leak. Right. And that's where it could go into the thousands because it doesn't get noticed until they have right. to pay that bill. That is correct. And we do send out uh, personnel to do uh, investigations mm -hmm. on the properties and also to assist uh, customers as well to find the leaks. Do we have any sort of, uh, like in the, in the system, any sort of like alerts where it will let us know like, okay, in this certain meter, Okay, it's a it's, it's okay. It's a red flag. Something's going on because it's uh, consuming a lot of gallons. Yes, the, the uh, customer can set up uh, alerts through the app. Uh, set up alerts through the maximum gallons that they can foresee uh, that the, a leak will be uh, occurring. Not to exceed, let's say, 500 gallons per per day. If you exceed 500 gallons per day, you get an alert. On but to us, we don't have an alert on our system where it will alert us, okay, this certain meter, something's off and, you know, mm. not to the, because what if the rate payer is not, like, if they yeah. haven't. Like, like logged or done that in the app, like put yes. that in it. Like, yes. a, like our system have an alert system that says, this customer has already at, by this time. I believe. I believe Census Analytics, which is the billing software that we have, does flag some of those accounts, and the meter readers are yeah, made aware of that. But I'm not too sure what the threshold would be on that. No, like I would look alert. at the threshold and see yeah. what that would what be, be interesting to see. Maybe in our system we could adjust it too, where mm -hmm. it's residential. You know, certain amount of gallons are used, and um, it will alert us that if we go over, it will red flag us so that we certain. need to to look into it. Okay. It's kind of like whenever you have on your banking app, every purchase that you make, <laughs> you get that little alert and you know 
that I authorized that or I didn't. And then there's the confusion when there's um, when it's, if it's been raining because I know that's um, I know I've spoken to to Mr. Salinas about this um, where a family it's, it had been raining and raining and there was like puddles and and so there was also a leak mm -hmm. and they didn't know that it, the puddles came from the rain or it was there was a leak. Mm -hmm. By the time they figured it out, they had like all of these charges on their account, and so so there's that confusion as well. No, I mean, uh, we can take the, all, all those into, into consideration, uh, but certainly the, the actual uh, section that we're looking here for the leak repair assistance, it only authorizes the board to make those adjustments and not the general manager. So that's why we need to put it as part of the, of the actual, uh, of this section of the rules that the general manager can, can do the leak uh, adjustments. Yes. Because right now I've, I've been doing the leak adjustments because that was that was the practice. If, Go ahead. If there's if there's a concern about the about um, the the cap on the number of requests where relief can be granted, that one month might not be able to capture. You know, in that situation, um, reference where you know an individual doesn't get you know doesn't really take notice that there is a leak until they receive that bill. Um, you know, there's, there's several ways that we can go about it. There's an internal, you know, monitoring that, I don't know what the, the additional, you know, any kind of monitoring like that, right, is either gonna require additional man hours on the, on the front end of setting it up and then monitoring, it, reviewing it, and then sending out those notices to customers. It might be an overall thing, and Robert would have to speak to this, he'd be more knowledgeable, but it might be more efficient to just increase the number of months where a request can be granted up to two instead of one that way. Two months. Okay, we can, yeah, we can do uh, that. Yeah, because by the time the customer okay, sees that leak or finds that leak, it probably is too And by the time they fix it. <clears throat> I yes. mean, we, we can. We, I mean, we can certainly change. This is this is just uh, the recommendation, but we can change the months and we can change the thresholds of the of the, of the okay. adjustment. Okay. Yeah, and my only concern is that okay. So I have a say a constituent of mine that calls me and says my bill was sixty dollars and now it's three hundred. Okay. So I'm gonna have to come to the executive committee to ask them if they can grant that for my customer. No, they'll submit the, the paperwork through customer service. Uh -huh. Then we'll have a committee. They don't have to show up. Uh, we'll have a committee and we'll present. Uh, I'll, I'll present those those cases uh, through through the committee, and then the committee will approve or not approve. Yeah, my only concern is just the committee. Like, how, uh, will the rest of uh, the board members know if those uh, requests were approved? That's going to come to a board meeting. It will not go through a board meeting. It will be through uh, the committee. The committee will approve and, and sign and, and vote. And then we'll, unless we'll, I request to see what was approved and what yes. was not, that's the only way I'll find out. Uh, yes, unless we can we can change that. And that's currently, the, you're the one plan. doing all the adjustments. Yes, I'm doing all, all the adjustments. All of them. Yes. And I think that's what we had done it before because it was a lot easier for the GM just to do it because he's here on a daily basis. Yeah, and I think we could, committee. and we could get a reporting every month so that we are aware, yes, we, and of course we don't want to lose money for the district. We want, you know, to make sure that whatever leak repair gets fixed um, because we're incurring that expense. That uh, but, you know, in the sense of, do we have to go through all of this, you know, or how are we going to find out if they were approved or not approved? I mean, we can definitely, uh, a report every month for all the something that like were, that. that were adjusted yeah. but uh as mr tekinio was mentioning either leave it to the general manager or up to a certain amount amount like 250 dollars or less or have a committee as well over 250 dollars or just have the general manager right <coughs> yes that's that's what, we, that's what mm -hmm. we're adding this to the i would recommend for the gm just to do all that leak And, and the reason this came up, uh, mm -hmm. this this came up because we were we were looking into into all the the, the, the rules and all we rules. well I, I found out I, I brought it up to to Jaren on 
that the rules only specify that the board can make the changes. And I have been making mm -hmm. other league repairs for, for months now. But that was the practice from prior, prior uh, general managers because it was a direction given by the board to mm -hmm. do so. But it was not, not ever implemented on, on black and white yeah. on, on paper. It kind of just seems a little micro. So then the concerns that I've been, the concerns that I kind of have brought up um, almost daily that I call you, sir, <laughs> um, with customers that are getting charged like high, high amounts, and then I'm calling you like, what happened with this one? And is that still something that we're gonna? Is that still gonna be a practice that we can continue with, or is that something that's gonna change? Because I just want to take care of them as soon as they call me. Um, because no, 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 and not go through the I mean, tedious can, process I mean, of, of the executive for, committee for having any, to meet any, and approve it. I'd rather get a reporting each month okay. saying, you know, this is what we approved. Okay. And just let because it seems a little micromanaging. Yeah. Okay. And just let the GM continue what he's doing right now. Then it would be easier. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you but know, just faster. To, to put it as part of the rules that the yes. general manager yeah. can do that. Can yes. And can that we get that, uh, that report at the end when we meet of the requests that have come in and if they've been approved or not or pending investigation or whatever it might be okay and it doesn't matter i mean in my opinion about that way you can kind of keep up or all of us can keep up with the constituents that have been calling us Correct. and find out if they were taken care of or not because they'll okay. continue to call us and call us i know that mr salinas has been really good as far as um whenever yes. i've called about um whatever the issue might be he always calls me back and lets me know, okay, it has been mm -hmm. fixed, or this is, I mean, yeah. so as far as I'm concerned, I really don't need like a list of what's been approved or whatever, because if you're already telling me that you already fixed the problem, yeah. Yeah. and then the community member calls me and tells me, oh, thank you so much, it was fixed, they already called me from all was said, they adjusted my pay, they did this, whatever, then to me that's enough. Yeah. To me but that's just enough. just to kind of protect you, and in in what you've approved or authorized or the, the office has approved, I think yes. it would be good to have that documentation. Some type okay. of backup that the documentation, that. yeah. So yes. since this is changing in black and white, and this is not about micromanaging or anything like that, mm -hmm. it's like, are you comfortable with making decisions mm -hmm. like that when it comes to the thousands? Oh, yeah. Or would you rather have us um, approve it? You know, because mm -hmm. I know that it goes back to you and I just want for you to like not feel like, you know, but you're taking an, on a decision like that. We can set a, a threshold, but mm -hmm. the only thing is that I will need authorization uh, uh, as part of the documents, part of the, the rules. Okay. That I can I, that I can do that. Okay. I mean, if, but if I can continue, I mean, I can continue the same way mm -hmm. I've been I've been doing it for. The way that's for happening now, but I think, would be. But I, it's because I, this is this was brought up by Mr. Salinas because he feels that he didn't want to be responsible for making a decision when it's in the thousands. Yeah. And so it, it's not on the, no, because it's not on the rules. Because it's not in the rules, exactly. Because it's not that was the, not that was because the anybody was trying to change it. It's just that that I can make mm -hmm. those those uh, authorizations. So we have yes, a motion. We could, we could modify this, however, the board uh, would prefer. You know, that would be most of what we're talking about here. I think is changes to to section the proposed new section C. We could just have the first sentence that authorizes the general manager, we could add uh, another sentence to section C um, where the, you know, relief granted under that section um, can be available in a report to the board. You know, we could add, we could add that if, uh, if that's something that the board wants. Um, and if the board wants to change uh, section E from one month billing cycle per customer per calendar year, we can change that to up to uh, how the board would like uh, to see that rule change. So we have motions on the floor. Are you going to change your... Who's well, I, I changed my motion to reflect the discussion in adding the legal uh, to amend this. Uh, to, to authorize the, the general to manager. To authorize the general manager. But like you said, I set a, let's set a threshold uh, on uh, what how? comes to us, right? I mean... How much? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, because if it's yeah. a commercial building yeah. that has a leak mm -hmm. and it's not a residential and they have a leak of, I don't know, 5,000 mm -hmm. and over, right. 
then like those you know are special cases that need to come yes in. those special cases where he feels that you know we should take a decision on that okay so we set up a, a, we do like a limit is change that, that to five thousand, like you say and have that as a threshold and see how that is going forward um and see if that works and then yes. the per residential, another yes. amount, uh, like you said, the thousand. Can we or set? Can we set two different thresholds? One for residential mm -hmm. and one thousand. for yes. commercial. Yeah. Yes. A thousand for residential, and I mean that's the, the majority are below a thousand, right? But here and then. So we does get, this go like, with a thousand for residential and five thousand for commercial? Mm -hmm. Can we go with that? Or is five thousand high? Like what has commercial been is, 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 uh, maybe we can do a thousand for residential and maybe two thousand for commercial. Okay. As that would a, be better. And and basically, I, I think eighty percent are below that for mm -hmm. So it's going to be a few locations that we're going to get higher than those amounts. So do be. we approve the amendment with uh, stipulations to the stipulation that residential is limited to 1,000 and commercial 2,000? Correct. Mm -hmm. Authorizing the general manager to take care of the other. Anything under, under those two city. thresholds. And then one so month or two months? What's uh, your recommendation? Two I'd months, the recommendation, uh, Ms. Uh, what months? do you recommend, Robert? I mean, two, two months is, it's, uh, I think it's uh, To more, be able to compare enough. the yes. two? Or is that why you're yeah, saying I, two I, months? Right now, I was, I was practicing doing just, just one month. If they bring two, mo two months, I say, well, we'll help you out with one month. Instead yeah, of I, two months or the months. That way, they, it takes a while to find the Mr. Yeah. Salinas, can you also mention to the rest of the board how the rest of the uh, water utilities on the rest, yeah. they don't no, provide they this? They don't provide. Yeah. Uh, we are the only ones. Adjustments. They provide payment plans. Yeah. Uh, the neighboring cities. But not liquid. So you want to make a motion with those amendments? I so move to amend <laughs> the <laughs> You got it, you got it. Come the on. The order um, to reflect that we authorize the general manager to um, go ahead and approve the leak adjustments. adjustments and to have the threshold for residential at 1,000, commercial at 2,000. And, and you would have the authority for to go back two months. And to have the authority to go back two months. Okay, I have second. a motion by Ms. Ana Maria Perez and I have a second by Dr. Villarreal. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Item number four, discussion and possible action on approval of supplemental number two to work authorization number 12 with M2 Engineering PLLC for additional services to the Palmview Yard Line project hookup project. Mr. Salinas. Yes, ma Madam President, members of the board, uh, M2 Engineer is currently working on the design for the phase two of the, of the NatBank uh, uh, yard line project. Uh, as, part of the, as part of the design, uh, there's a geotechnical services that is needed so that the M2 Engineer can complete the, the final plans and specifications with the geotechnical uh, services. Uh, before you, we had added uh, on Exhibit F, uh, geotechnical services and material testing but at this time, after uh, meeting with Milo and, and talking with, uh, uh, with uh, NatBank, as of today, <coughs> we have $16,500 that will be reimbursed just for the geotechnical, you know, but nothing for the material testing as of now. But we plan to meet with NatBank again to see if we can put it as part of the plans and specifications, the material testing, so that it can be part of the same grant and not funding from our side. Is that uh, correct, Miller? You can elaborate more on yes, that? Yes, uh, good evening, uh, Madam President and members of the board. Uh, basically, everything that Mr. Salinas just mentioned, we're approximately 95% complete, and we need a geotech report to give us recommendations on the backfill uh, so that we can finalize the plans. And once, once we have that, we'll be able to bid it out. But the material testing right now, what they told us, it, it was not really 
reimbursable, so we want to talk to NADVAC to see if we can make it part of the project or part of the, uh, part of the, the construction grant. And so that's the reason that it was removed from Exhibit F so that we can try and see if, if we can make it reimbursable. So right now, the request is just for GeoTech services so that we can get it. So there was an additional handout uh, passed yes. uh, just before the meeting. That's the- that's Just the 17,000. That's the one that we're uh, recommending. If we should be getting reimbursed that Milo 16,500 16, out of that, correct? Correct. <coughs> out of the 17, 365. Yes. 16,5 will go to that. So so basically, I was said we'll be responsible for $865 for okay. just for the geotechnical, so, uh, the geotech service. You recommend it, Robert? Yes, yes. So, so move. A second. Okay, I have a motion by Mr. Tijerina and a second by Mrs. Perez. All in favor say aye. 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 Um, anyone opposed? Motion carried. Item number five, discussion of possible action to amend the interlocal agreement with Hidalgo County Municipal Utility District number one regarding temporary sewage transportation and treatment services. Mr. Salinas. Yes, so uh, Madam President, members of the board, uh, as part of your package, if uh, you can go to the last page of the package of item number number five, which is the, which is the, which is the map of the services. So currently we have uh, an, uh, an agreement with the uh, MUD uh, Municipal Utility District here uh, neighboring to us here to the to the west so basically the area that you're looking at on the map on the exhibit a uh, between abram road and uh, minnesota and expressway north to to veterans that is a section that was approved as part of the original agreement that we have with mud for them to treat the sewer uh right now me if i'm not uh, mistaken it's 69 accounts 69 homes 69 homes that are connected to this system that uh, mud is treating the, the sewage. And because of the situation that we have with, with the current uh, contractor on that area that is not substantially complete, we have to send the sewer to mud for them to treat that, that, that sewer. So what we're asking the board right now is to amend the, uh, the agreement that we have so that we can add additional homes and additional commercial spaces so that mud can treat that sewer and also we're uh, basically changing the amount per home uh, on this uh, same, uh, same agreement. So if, if we look at page two out of the, out of the interlocal agreement on uh, in terms of the agreement, which is number, number two, uh, wastewater facility, I'm, I'm sorry, under section two terms of agreement, uh, section three, uh, wastewater facility uh, where you can see where we have uh, the uh, additional uh, residential connections not to exceed 120 connections at $12 uh, per connection and for commercial we have 120 uh, not to exceed 120 commercial connections at $17 and this is something that we will send to to mud for uh, their approval currently uh, we're paying uh, 1250 I believe yes 1250 12, uh, 1250 per month as a flat fee and what we're doing is we're separating it per connection and to allow us to do more connections into their system for treatment temporarily until we have our system uh, going is there anything else uh, Jaren, for this agreement no, I, think that, <coughs> I think that summarizes it great basically it's changing it from a flat fee from Primary substantive change is uh, changing from a flat fee to, uh, to a per connection fee where we should save a, a little bit of more money. And of course, temporary until we have our system going, then we'll transfer everything to our system. Do we need to make a motion before we discuss? How do we need to make a motion before they discuss? No, you can discuss. And then discuss. Oh, okay. So, how many more connections are we going to be adding? Uh, as far as residential, we're looking at approximately 50 connections and, uh, of course, uh, all commercial, 100, 120. 
but we can always come back and, uh, and amend this disagreement if we go over that that amount. Right now, it's just to to to, to set a, a a limit and a cost uh, per per connection. Will we make any money off of this? We'll we'll make we'll make money on the on the consumption more on the consumption. Uh, so basically, that's what we'll, we'll make. Not a significant amount, but. Yeah. You know, we're using electricity to pump from one of our lift stations to their system. Is that what that is on the exhibit there? That little, um, that little picture right there near that field. Is on, that the little lift station? On on the on the exhibit on the exhibit, uh, yes, that's the lift station. If if, if you can see on the, on, the, on the I guess on the south right behind, section yeah. of Goodwin and, and veterans, that's that's uh, that's the H E B. A little bit to the north northeast, that's yeah. the that's the small that's the lift station. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And then these green dots, what are they? What do they represent? Those represent manholes. Those okay. represent manholes and the main trunk lines that were uh, installed. But of course, the, the section that is not substantially complete is to the east of Minnesota, where this, where this uh, section, where this infrastructure, uh, sewer infrastructure, goes into. So right now, all of this area is not being serviced. Or they're being serviced through mud. It's being serviced through mud. Okay. But right now, there's only six, about approximately 69 connections that are being serviced through mud. But we want to add more, more to the to, to the limits, the, mm -hmm. the the limit that we have to include commercial as well, because there's some new plazas that are coming in and, and they okay. they need yeah, to that'd be great. as well. And and this has been going on <coughs> for how long? Let me look in here. It's been going on for more than a year, Jaime. Uh, The, the, okay, so the, the con this contract was signed on May 2021. May 2021. Wait, the, with mud? Or you with mud, with mud, yeah. So it's been going for two, no, for one and a half years. Going, going into two years. Mm -hmm. Going into two years in, 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 in May 2023. Yes. And, and like there's no uh, like end in sight right now? There's no because of the litigation. The litigation until until we finish the litigation and we fix the the, the infrastructure uh, that were constructed <laughs> by the contractor, then we can we can push the the sewer east towards the towards the Homa lift station. Is this, this is supposed to pump the, the lift station supposed to pump the main line that goes on veterans towards uh, the Homa? But since that section is not substantially complete, that's So move. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Ms. Ana Maria Perez and a second by Mr. Hiti Hirina. All in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. Item number six, general manager's report. Mr. Salinas. Yes, uh, Madam President, members of the board, I have here with me uh, Mr. Jaime Reina, uh, finance director. He'll go over the November financials. <coughs> <clears throat> yes, board, these financials are as of November. If you could please turn your attention to the statement of revenues, expenses, and changes in that position. Here you'll see that we're at 91% of the year. Our operating revenues are at 97%, so 6% ahead of budget. Our operating expenses are at 93%, so slightly ahead of budget as well, but overall we're in line with the budget. <clears throat> On the... Yes. Professional service and other services, mm -hmm. we're kind of over on that. Is that, can you kind of speak to that? Yes, that grouping has engineering, um, legal, and the majority. Okay. Yeah. Which one was that, Ms. Ms. The oh. professional and other services. Professional. We're at 129%. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And what about the bank merchant services? We're over kind of on that. As well. So that's. Um, the credit card processing fees that's where that's being recorded but on the, on the on top as well under miscellaneous fines and fees we also have the five percent charge so it, it nets out in the end but that's the processing yeah for the with the credit cards because we charge a fee if they do if they um, pay with credit card or yes we're, we're charging a five percent okay. fee mm -hmm. 
I think everybody does nowadays. I went to go get Chinese right. and they charged me because I used my card. <laughs> <laughs> And on the vehicle expense? That has uh, vehicles, repairs, and also fuel, so that's also over budget because at the beginning of the year, fuel prices were pretty, yes. yeah, mm -hmm. very okay. high. Any further questions or concerns? Okay. Mm -hmm. Jump to item B, uh, new director training. Yes, uh, Madam President, uh, members of the board. So uh, we attach uh, a calendar, basically January uh, 23 and uh, February 23. Uh, so basically there's supposed to be a new director training and that's 90 days after being sworn in, correct? <coughs> so right now, uh, I guess the plan is to have that training conducted here at our uh, boardroom, uh, basically within now and February 16th. February what? 16. February 16. February 16. February 16. That'll be the last the deadline. Uh, we have a recommendation. I know I've been I've been uh, communicating with uh, Jaron on this, but we're looking since we're gonna have a, a board meeting uh, next month, uh, February 6. We're probably now that the the, the attorneys will be here, uh, take advantage of that and, and have it on the the following day, on the seventh. That's one of the recommendations uh, that, that we have. Is it a one-day training, sir? It, it's, it's a, a one-day training? It's uh, approximately five hours, uh, Jaron, six hours. That's correct, yeah. There, there, are, there will be some uh, at-home training that, uh, that we will provide that you guys can do on your own time. Um, and then the, the, the in-class portion will be about five hours. Or it can be done on a Saturday as well, but it depends you know, how the board feels. We, but it, but uh, go ahead. Of course, we can make whatever day it is. It works for the board. Um, generally, work for us. Uh, but in in discussions, certainly the seventh seems like it'd be a, an efficient day uh, since uh, we already be down there for the meeting. Um, other potential dates. Uh, Possibly the 21st, that would be this upcoming Saturday. Uh, also, the, the 5th, um, the day before our next general meeting, uh, might, uh, I think that was also uh, potentially discussed. But I, you know, if the 7th works for those that uh, need to attend training, then we can put that on calendar. I still move that we move this to executive session so we can all discuss the dates. And then we move to executive session. It's, it's just, uh, oh. Jaron, can we move to executive? It's a, it's a general manager's report, so there's no action on, no. on it. But, yeah. we, but we do not have to take, uh, you know, we don't have to take uh, or, or select a date mm -hmm. right now. It can be talk amongst. Uh, we, we can talk about it, you know. We'll just have to set a notice of when we do that, don't we, Jaron? Once we decide on the date. Well, because there's going to be four. There's four. Four, four. yeah. If, if there's a quorum of board members deliberating on it, um, then then we would need a post notice. And if we have a quorum at the meeting, that, that, then we need a post notice. And I believe we, we will have, have a quorum. Right. It yeah, can be a talk, talk among the board members. Saturday. And Saturday. They can um, let us know. Right. right. But really, yeah, it is, it's Saturday. Just, uh, oh, sorry, uh, rather you know, It's not something that the we're right needs to we make a decision today. Just to consider and um, and let Robert know if the seventh would work uh, or if the fifth or the twenty first, and uh, and we can schedule seventh. You know, yes. Half a day. Uh, yeah, I would pull it up because I'm t I, yeah, on the fourth I won't be able to. So is it all? And Jaron, is it just the new board members that need to do this? So seven. Is it just the new board members? Just the new board members. That have so seven. That's correct. Just the new board members that have not received the training. Half a day. Yeah. Okay. So we have agreed that uh, the seventh, and the the rest of the directors are willing to take half a day. Okay. So that we could do the meeting after our board meeting on the sixth. Okay. 
So it'll be at probably after, but we can talk about the details, afternoons or, mor or morning. Yes. So we have decided on the 7th, February 7th. Yes. Okay. That's yes. Great. Thank you. I withdraw, I withdraw my motion that I wasn't supposed to make because uh, <laughs> <laughs> a motion. <laughs> Then we'll go into discussion till later. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we will further discuss and we'll take a decision at another time. Item number six C, La Homa um, lift station. Uh, yes, Madam President, members of the board, this is the the future uh, Circle K on the on the north uh, west corner of La Homa in uh, US 83. And basically, it's just a, a, an update report. We have been in communication with Melden and Hunt, Hunt, who is the representative of La Homa Rep, which is Circle K. And they have been working on the design uh, plans based on the existing lift station and materials that our SUD is, is going to provide. Also, they're being coordinating uh, a meeting scheduled with uh, La Jolla Independent School District because there's gonna be a, a force main, a sanitary sewers force main that we will need to tie into and then go ahead and construct towards our new uh, lift station that is built north of La Homa. That is, that is the update that I have for this. Hopefully we can meet with Melden and Hunt uh, this week, uh, Milo, and uh, he will be setting up a meeting with La Jolla ISD either to do a memorandum of understanding that we can use that uh, existing force main so that uh, Circle K can do the tie-in through that new lift station. So that's what we have on that. Okay, any further questions or concerns? Okay, moving forward, uh, item number seven, district engineer's report. A, uh, NAD Bank technical assistance agreement, sewer hookups. Is that somewhere, do we have that packet? Or we have, we don't have that report, right? No, no, uh, I just mentioned to Pam that I'm gonna email this so that it can be emailed to everyone. And we'll start doing it. Uh, <coughs> I'm gonna email it prior to the meeting so that it can be part of the package. Thank you. Questions, concerns? As far as the, the solicitation, Milo, that will be March? Yes. Yeah, so so for, for, the, for the phase two. So of for the early. phase two on the additional connections, the, what you guys uh, basically mm -hmm. uh, make a motion for the geotech report. Once the geotech report is completed, it'll take us approximately uh, seven to ten days to get the packet completed and put it, uh, make it advertisement. We'll get it reviewed through NAT Bank and our set and then and then get it advertised for a competitive bid. So we're hoping that you know we, we can get that uh, probably between February and March and get started with construction probably around April. Okay. 
And that's for that area on Old 83, Abram, that area, right? Yes, it's uh, Abram and, and Business 83 on the north side mm -hmm. uh, for Embatico subdivision and South Green Road south of Business 83. Any other questions on this question? Okay, um, item 7B. I forgot to mention this was a Havana water treatment plant improvements project from the water development board. Okay, any questions or concerns? Okay, uh, 7C, the Mendiola water storage tank project. Yeah, it's a long, very long one. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, item number seventy: the water, de uh, the water development board, Palmview Sanitary Sewerage Improvements Project. And that would be to help our case, correct? How soon will you have that? I think uh, we could provide that in two weeks. That's what they were doing that last time that we met. That we were It was all raining. I think we saw the trucks out there in front of EB. Yes. Well, that's, we have it on video, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's great. Uh, any further questions or concerns? Okay, moving forward. Before we move on, Milo, just when you send it to Jeff, can you copy my office window as well? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, item number eight, executive session. As provided by the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code Sections 551.071-551.072, 551 
2022.091, the Board of Directors may convene in closed executive session to deliberate, discuss, or consult regarding the matters listed below and on, prop on proper motion and approval of any of the items set forth. A, Performance Service Inc., Litigation, Texas Open Acts Meetings Act, Texas Government Code, Section 551.071, Consultation with Attorney. Um, can I have a motion to go into executive at 6.52 p.m.? So moved. I have a motion by Ms. Ana Maria Perez and a second by Mr. Tijerina. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carried.